Ba -da -ba. Hey everybody, Last Outrider here with an exciting video this time. The last of the End Time series and the first of the Age of Sigmar series. And I'm sure lots of people have been wondering, what do I think about the Age of Sigmar? Well, I already said it in the End Times video. I think they're combining the Warhammer universe and the 40k universe into one game system so that you can do both and lo and behold I look at one game system I mean the big thing that they added was Space Marines or Sigmarines or you know what I'm talking about I mean, now you've got 40k and Fantasy Battle basically uh, the same game so uh, what I think about Age of Sigmar is exactly what I said in my end time videos. Back to the question. What is Azerheim? The eternal city. The celestial city. The heart of Sigmar's celestial realm. A vestige of a broken world and last sanctuary of the free peoples. How came it to be this marvel amongst the stars. The vengeful sons of Azerheim. The gods of chaos were triumphant. The doom they had brought upon the world consumed it, stripped it to its core, tore it from the firmament, and sent it spinning across the cosmic reaches of reality. They had secured their ultimate victory, and the heavens rang with their cruel laughter. Yet in their pride, in their complacency, they had not destroyed it utterly. There still remained of that broken world a metallic core. Every mote of its substance saturated with powerful magic. It was to this last hope that Sigmar clung, the final remnant of a reality that the Dark Gods had sought to capsize entirely. The spinning core caught the eye of the monstrous constellation Dracotheon, the celestial drake, whose coils across the sky like a river of glimmering gems. The great beast saw a kindred spirit in Sigmar. He cut the remnant of the world that was in his colossal claws and named it Malice and set it in the firmament so that he could better admire it. The friendships that grew between God-King and Zodiacal Dragon began the history of Sigmar's world anew, and that many more realms, and that of many more realms beside. There you go. 40k realm, Sigmar realm, all together, one universe. The broken world. The ruinous powers had counted their victory complete. But by letting part of the broken world survive, they had left a dangerous legacy. Its core was an anchor against the storm, a lodestone for the echoing souls of those who sought to deny chaos its ultimate victory. Memories have great power, especially those of vengeful souls. Those of embittered gods are the most potent of all. Like seeds that weather the winter to sprout anew in the spring, Sigmar and the other lost divinities that the world began, divinities of that world began to grow stronger once more. All bar the god-king himself slumbered in an unknowable limbo. But the fallen were nourished nonetheless 
by the ever-shifting magics that saturated malice. Their memories and dreams slowly shaped the Grand Sphere's eldritch aura, coalescing into forms that had a presence in the material universe. When the suns and moons of the heavens glowed bright, the surface of malice surged and flickered with the light of a billion lost souls, hosts of the vengeful, one moment corporeal, the next as diaphanous and incorporeal as ghosts. These shadows of a bygone age were not alone. There remained those warriors and seers who had escaped the unbridled destruction of chaos, who had sheltered in the otherworldly heavens, passed into mirror dimensions, or been swallowed by the realm of chaos, only to fight their way back out. But for every soul that somehow clung to existence, there were thousands who were gone forever. In many ways, it was this grand outrage that gave the survivors a sense of purpose, a bitter need for vengeance, and a material form. The Great Founding In his wanderings through the new realms shown to him by Dracotheon, Sigmar won the awe and allegiance of these scattered peoples. He led the strongest of them in the great founding of Azir. They labored under the light of new suns and moons, unceasing in their determination to defy the fates. Slowly, incredibly, the city of Azerheim was raised upon the mountainous domain bathed in the strange light of malice. Its grandire rose to eclipse that of the ancient cities of man, elf, and dwarf. Over long millennia, Azerheim became the stellar metropolis that now shines bright at the heart of Sigmar's celestial realm. The celestial city's golden spires and citadels reached ever higher, glinting in the benign starlight. Every iota of the old race's artifices was bent to its creation. Their ambitions and ancestral skills combining with those of refugees from other realms to form a domain fit for the god-king himself. There you go. That is Azerheim. Wow. I mean, just look at that for a second, and you hear... <laughs> it can be built by many realms. It's an interdimensional realm. Uh, 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 built by all of the races together, and even races we don't know. And even uh, from even of other realms. But let's go on. The defiant few. The mortal people were given free reign to form nations within the star-spanning Azir, and many clung to lost cultures and traditions. Those who had long worshipped Sigmar gathered together into religious war tribes, wishing to do violence in his name. Dower Duradin labored to construct grand fortresses alongside exiled elf artisans and muscular human masons. All animosities put aside in the name of survival. That and the everlasting defiance of the chaos gods. Sigmar himself bent his own godly will to awakening malice, to taking its power whole and to unifying his ever-growing peoples under the kingly sigil of Gal Moraz. 
Statues and monuments beyond counting were raised to his glory. Armies, once more, raised in his name. As generations came and went, Azerheim, the eternal city, became the fortress of the lost, the stronghold of the dispossessed, the pride of Sigmar's vengeful sons, the echo of that which had come before had grown not softer, but ever louder and more strident until the clamor of warlike souls filled the heavens. Though some had been driven from their homelands and others cast adrift on the tides of time, every one of them dreamed of taking their revenge upon the forces of chaos. So that's the realm of Azur. It's the realm of order. You could be from anywhere at any time, in any way, in any history, living next to each other. You could have space marines right there. It doesn't matter who you are. You're living in Sigmar's realm. That kind of is working to explain who the emperor is now, obviously. For life is tenuous. A new history was stitched like a tapestry across the fabric of space, with entire civilizations rising and falling throughout the magical realms that Dracotheon had revealed to Sigmar. Wars were fought against the living and the dead, the monstrous and the cunning. Battle was joined across a thousand sprawling continents as Sigmar's people matched their razored blades against the brute strength of green skin and Gargant, Ogar, and Trollgoth. These new realms were not short of horrors, and many of mankind's ancestral foes had fought their own ways back to reality. Fighting for supremacy against even stranger denizens. For life is tenuous, no matter how vile. The gods of chaos, ever hungry to corrupt and to spoil, looked upon Sigmar's new reign as it spread across the mortal realms and smiled. They sent forth their hordes once more to destroy. And for a long and torturous time, they were victorious. The lands ran red with blood, and the skies burned high above. Wars beyond counting were waged on a monstrous, reality-spanning scale. Empires were reduced to Bone-strewn ruins and ancient landscapes were twisted and reshaped. Few peoples survived the Age of Chaos and did not bow to the will of the Dark Gods. And of those, even fewer reached the safety of Sigmar's celestial realm. And yet, the shadows of a vengeance Long awaited had not dissipated, but the clustered thicker and darker, building like thunderheads upon the horizon of those new realms. When that tempest broke, it would do so with a violence that mortal eyes had never seen. <laughs> and what will it break on? And how will it break? Well, that you will hear next time in part two, Wars of the Lost. Actually, no, you're not. I'm just going to do it right now. Psych! The Wars of the Lost. The wars between the free citizens of Azerheim and the monstrosities assailing the mortal realms have been waged with merciless fury. 
Only a few have survived to speak of them. And still, these are spoken of in hushed whispers when the evening fires burn low. The veteran warriors show the horrific burns they sustained in the Magmadroth peaks, where the banners of eight demon legions were raised over the bodies of the brave. Only the arrival of a stampede of lava beasts ridden by strange Duradin brought time enough for a few good men to escape. Apparently not women, though. Sorry, all the good women died. Zage is bent by the weight of harrowing memories, frown upon those who ask of the night of madness. When every land, save Sigmar's own, was beset by the riddling hordes of Zinch. As the moons above blazed green-black with warp fire, steadfast allies turned upon each other and even the mightiest cities tore themselves apart. All those old enough to wield a blade know of the black year, when the battle lust spilled from one realm to the next like a fever. Even those tribes and nations who wrested victory from the infected hordes were reduced to shriveled corpses within a matter of months, consumed from the inside out by their own bloodthirsty desires. There you go. And that is what Azerheim is. I know there's a lot of speculating and talking out there, but this right here I just read you is the fluff that describes the creation of the Age of Sigmar and the uh, basically unification of the fantasy battle and uh, Warhammer 40k realms into one uh, continuous storyline. The storyline, which as I said in the End Times videos, uh, is, is the Eternal Champion series. I also said it in the um, Ariman video. Ariman is an eternal champion. They're going back to the forces of chaos and forces of order on equal sides. Now, what's interesting in fiction is that order is not always good. And chaos is not always evil. There are many uh, books where order is the bad guy. A Wrinkle in Time is the first one that jumps into my mind. Uh, order, order is not good. Anytime you have a, a book where you have some authoritarian state, some tyrannical, you know, um, human rights violating whatever, Terminator, there you go, Terminator, the movie. Order is not good, the machines running everything, all those little chaotic humans, they need to just be quelled and stopped. Many, many, many stories look at look at order as bad, or chaos as good, and that's what I see here. So I'm going to be interested to see if they add that aspect to the Age of Sigmar. Is it still just going to be always chaos bad, always order good, or will they switch things around? Since we're talking about all the possibility of existence, it's possible. We'll see. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>